Hello, salam alaikum. Welcome to episode number six, Mubarak bin London. This is part of the Empowerment Dose series. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, today is about Arabian hospitality and what we can learn from it. Yeah, and, and as I said, I, I would like to, to compare uh, with the real life experience, what happened around the world. And this is one of the example of Mubarak bin London. In this episode, number six, uh, the key feature is uh, who is this Mubarak in London? And uh, his journey to Rubul Khali, empty quarter, and then we'll see at the end why it's connected to Arabian hospitality. There's something uh, here to, to learn. So first of all, before we continue, is the pandemic still uh, uh, with us? And uh, please protect yourself and protect with others. We uh, also encourage you uh, to, to get vaccinated if you can. Okay, so this is a reminder. So let's see who's this Mubarak uh, bin Landa. Actually, his real name is Sir Wilfred Patrick the Sanger. He was born in uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia in 1910, and he died, passed away in 2003 in London. Uh, he, he, he was raised there because his father was a, a consular and he studied uh, there also. So when he grew up, he was uh, uh, researching in the uh, source of locust. The locust is a grasshopper who are destroying the farms where they came from. So slowly he was trying, uh, he was traveling. First journey back in 1946, he went through Ethiopia, Yemen, to Saudi Arabia, he reached up to Iraq. And then the second journey, he took him from again Yemen, uh, Oman, and then to the empty quarter, and then to the UAE. Uh, on his journey, he, he have two companions, uh, Salim uh, bin Qabisha and uh, bin Kabina. Okay, these two young men, they are with him almost for three years of his second journey. And this is, I'm trying to explain where this Rubel Khali, for those who don't know, is between UAE, Oman, and some part of Yemen and Saudi Arabia. You can see here, you see this one here. Okay, uh, what is that? It is, it's near the Liwa. Uh, Liwa in Al Ain is an oasis of, on the edge of Rubel Khali, the empty quarter. The empty quarter is the world's largest uninterrupted sand desert and is draped of an area roughly three times the size of the UK. British explorer Bertram Thomas was the first Westerner to cross this giant sandbox back in 1931. But the Wilfred Dessinger, our Mubarak in London, made the region famous uh, in his travelogue Arabian Sands. Okay, this is sourced from uh, Lonely Planet. So here's Mubarak in London, you can see with his one of uh, uh, with Salim bin Ga Gabaisha uh, back in 1948. So during his journey, or, uh, actually that uh, he was trying to introduce himself for the first time to the local. My name is uh, Wilfred the Singer from London. So they couldn't understand what he said. Listen, your name from now, if you want to be with us here, I know you'll be with us for a long time and people easy to remember you. Your name we give you Mubarak bin London meaning Mubarak from London, or Mubarak, uh, the son of London. <laughs> that's, that's how it is. So in this photo then, he, he, he really, he wear the local cloth, the no shoes, and he traveled. But the, the thing that he was different than the first explorer, he have his camera, and then he took all, uh, uh, you know, like it's recorded. So one of the, from the research, we done that, uh, this is what he say, they were so kind to me at Abu Dhabi that I remained there for some 20 days, uh, going off with the sheikhs on a door to explore the islands to the westward of the Trucial coast. Now, this is originated from, uh, that's, the, that's the reference you can see when I got it from Pitt River Museum. It's a wonderful website. You can research it and know more about uh, the center. So this is actually from his second journey because he, he, he traveled uh, 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 for long, for, for some times. And then when he reached Abu Dhabi, he was so tired. 
and then uh, they they welcome him. Yeah, the sheikhs here in Abu Dhabi they welcome him with all uh, pure heart for this stranger that they did know him. This is another photo the center with Sheikh Zaid and his family. Uh, that is Qasr al-Husn back in two, uh, for 1948, and this is uh, 2019. This is the latest uh, photo. So, there are another research now. We arrived at Abu Dhabi on the 14th. I had intended to stay only a day or two in Abu Dhabi before leaving for Buremi, that is in Oman, on the edge of the Oman Mountains. But Sheikh Shahbud and his brother Hiza and Khalid were so friendly, hospitable, and, and kind that we lingered here for 20 days, glad to relax in the comfort of their guest house from the strain under which we had been living. Can you believe you all the day, weeks, and months struggle in the desert, living in a shanty tent, and then now you are welcome to this uh, uh, house, and this is Qasr al Husn, by the way, here in Abu Dhabi. So that is now we start to learn about Arabian hospitality. By the way, uh, it's well known that uh, the maximum days that uh, they, you can offer the hospitality is three days, okay? But can you imagine he stay for 20 days? Uh, then when he go go back to uh, UK, uh, he started to write the book, one of the famous book. This is a masterpiece, Arabian Sands. And then he wrote other books, also many books he wrote. Uh, one of them also, another one is Wilfred Kessinger, A Vanished World. Uh, this is uh, when he went to, to Iraq uh, uh, in one of the, you know, uh, village and areas. So the Sintia shares a story of an old man, by the way, in this Arabian sense, and this is what I want to share with you. It's a pure ancient hospitality from his masterpiece uh, book, Arabian Saint. A story is told of an old man who came stumbling one night into a Bedouin camp, uh, there bare and exhausted. He was exhausted, he looked old, dirty, a visitor to the camp wonders aloud why such a tattered old creature will be treated in such respect and affection. A, be a Bedouin leader explains, He's, he is of the Beit Imani and famous. The people of the camp obviously knew him and greeted him. This is what uh, the Sincha telling us he, when he observed this person. He asked, when he said, I asked this, the Sincha William, the Sincha, he asked, what for? He responded, his generosity. I said I should not have thought he owned anything to be generous with, with and been Kabina said, meaning that uh, Wilfred now, the, he's thinking from his mind, hmm, this kind is generous, generosity for what? He's look old, dirty. You know what I mean? Well, he hasn't now. He hasn't got a single camel. He hasn't even got a wife. His son, a fan boy, was killed two years ago. Once he was one of the richest men in the tribe. Now he's nothing except a few gods. I ask, what happened to his camels? Did the riders take them? Or did they die of disease? Uh, well, Bin Kabina answered, no, generosity ruined him. No one ever came to his tent, but he killed a camel to feed the guest, to feed them. By God, he's generous. I could hear the envy on his voice. The Sanja, page number 71 from the Arabian Saint. So what's the lesson learned here? Actually, we learn that there are people so generous for the guests. Each, can you believe each guest come and he slaughter the whole camel and maybe that was excessive, but for him, the guests are on top than anything yeah so we have a quote now before we end up this uh, episode let not the emphasis of hospitality lie in bed and board but let the truth and love and honor and courtesy flow in all thy deeds ralph waldo emerson so you'll find that this is a naturally and most of the arabs are naturally like this 
But especially in this country, that's why I'm living now in Abu Dhabi. I'm proud that I'm living in Abu Dhabi. We can sense the hospitality still continue. It's still in the blood that we give more than expected. What we are learning from this, if you feel that, okay, the guests are, why so demanding nowadays? Why the, no, we have done nothing. You have done nothing for the guest. From this example, the person, he give all his camel, he become poor, but people respect him. Why I'm always giving this uh, extreme example uh, is always that to find out that we are doing nothing. So we always have to do more. Yes, we always have to do more. And, and think of this extreme uh, of the guest of hospitality, of the genius of hospitality. So that's what I'd like to share in this episode. And these are the references as usual. Thank you so much. And uh, as usual, I, I just end up with the end slide. Let me uh, stop. I hope we've learned something. Uh, because as I said, uh, this is a pure hospitality. And uh, if we want to do more for our guest, uh, actually, uh, there is a more, uh, more to do it. Uh, we cannot uh, uh, say that we have done enough. There's not enough, especially for the guest. You need to do more. Now, only not for the guest, for your friend, for, for the relatives, for anybody in the office also. Yeah, I hope you learned something today and see you next episode. Take care.